Hey guys, welcome and ting and ting and ting. And uh, today, someone suggested that I watch this here. Uh, so we're going to watch, uh, uh, it's called the Iron God, Romania's fastest movement. So we're going to take a look at this, diving into a little bit of political thing and so on about Romania and all of that. So about the Romanian history. Let's go ahead and YouTube and Sim Simmer and see what this is all about. Italy had the black shirts. Germany had the brown shirts. And Romania, Romania had the green shirts. These were the members of the Iron Guard, also known as the Legion of Archangel Michael, or the Legionnaire Movement. More on this extreme political faction coming up. Right off the bat there, that made me think of a... Uh, and it's not so much of a faction, but it's like a government-based thing. During the government before the revolution, what we used to call the... They call them a regiment because we really didn't have an army. Uh, they, they call them a regiment, and it's just guys that dress like they in a, in a in an army and stuff like that. But they were actually sort of like policemen. But we used to call them the green beasts because they wore green. And before that, nobody was wearing army colored stuff like that on the island in any of the uh, law forces and stuff that we had. And we, like I said, we didn't have an army, so. But then when the revolution take, 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 uh, took over, when the revolutionaries took over and they had a socialist government, and you see me putting up some quotation marks, they had the uh, People's Revolutionary Army. And uh, well, the name we used to call them was the PRE. And a lot of people who were part of the government before the revolution was pretty wary of them. And it was just a bunch of young people, you know what I mean? Uh, a lot of them I went to school with and stuff like that. And my brothers went to school with them. And even people that were in my school as I was going to school at the time, because I was in school for like a, a year. That The first year of the revolution, I was still in school. So, uh, yeah. You know, it's, it's funny how you, you have these different parts of the world, you know, and these political movements come. And we find these names for these... Uh, how should I put it? These forces uh, that sort of uh, try to give law and order to the uh, to the population and thing. And I'm telling you straight up, our situation wasn't as dire uh, as the one in Romania, uh, judging from the uh, the comments that I'm seeing. I'm judging from the comments that I'm seeing, not from any kind of a first-hand knowledge or anything like that, from the comments that I'm seeing. Let's keep watching this. Good to have you back on the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome to History Hustle. I'm Stefan, I'm a Dutch history teacher, and I'm hustling history for you. If you find it interesting, well, consider subscribing and join the hustle. Romania joined the side of the Entente during World War I was first defeated but rejoined near the end of 1918 and thus belonged to the winning team. During the Russian Civil War and the Romanian-Hungarian War gained control over Bessarabia and Transylvania. During the interwar years, France backed the so-called Little Entente. This was an alliance formed in 1921 by Czechoslovakia, Romania and the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes from 1929 known as the Kingdom of Yugoslavia to keep Hungary and Austria in check. Czechoslovakia was dismembered and France fell in 1940. And after this, three of Romania's neighbors began knocking on Romania's door for territory. The USSR, Hungary and Bulgaria. All in all, Romania lost 33% of its interwar landmass and population. Due to these territorial losses, autocratic King Carol was first to abdicate on the 6th of September. His son, King Mikhai, was in theory the new head of state as the national government was established. On the 23rd of November 1940, Romania officially joined the Axis powers. What was left of Romania had to rely on Germany to survive. In January 1941, the Iron Guard staged an uprising which was crushed by General Ion Antonescu. What was the Iron Guard? We must first notice that the Iron Guard was also known 
as the Legion of Archangel Michael and its members were referred to as legionaries. The movement was founded by Cornelio Zelea Cordereanu. He was born in 1899 in a town in the northern part of Moldavia where a majority of Jews lived. When Romania entered the First World War, Cordereanu had not yet come of age. He went to infantry school, but when he was finished, the war was over. He later studied in Yashi, where also there a great population of Jews lived. Mentored by Professor Alexandru Kuza, he developed his ideas of ultranationalism combined with anti-Semitism. Kuza established the National Christian Defense League. In 1927, Codriano founded his own fascist movement, the Iron Guard. The Iron Guard was a typical East Central European fascist movement rooted in populism, religion and peasant nationalism. Codriano and many other legionaries frequently wore embroidered shirts, which emphasized their connection to the people, soil and the peasant culture, and served as their unofficial uniform. The core of the movement's ideology was religious mysticism, which the Iron Guard combined with anti-individualism, anti-Semitism, racism, hostility toward democracy and toward communism. The legionaries saw the Jews as their main enemy. In order to become a member, a candidate had to swear to obey six laws of the movement. Discipline, work, silence, education, mutual aid and honor. Write oath in his own blood and pledge to kill when ordered so. Okay, straight up. Uh, the things on my island was nothing like this at all. This is crazy here. You know what I mean? Uh, my island is like what? At the time, probably 90% of African descent, so there, there, there couldn't be any, like, uh, ethnic disparage, disparage, disparities there. Then they could say that group did it. it. It was broken down solely on uh, political lines because, you know, the country was, back then was probably 80%, 85% Catholic. So, you know, you, there was no other real other religions uh, to have any kind of... a uh, adversity with you know what i mean there was a small uh contingent of, of anglican presbyterian not a whole lot of protestants or evangelicals on the island as of yet not a whole lot of them so it was mainly catholic uh, the revolution a lot of the kids that were part of the revolution came from catholic schools to to be exact you know what i mean but that was a dominant religion so it, it, it couldn't be based on religion and like i said it couldn't be based on ethnicity because of, <laughs> most of the people were black you know what i mean yeah, and and by then nobody knows which tribe who is from you know what i'm saying and there were some foreigners there but there were so little of them that nobody really paid much attention to them or well, you know the Grenadians just did their thing so you know it wasn't this harsh you know what i mean uh this this is kind of a crazy here yeah. During the Depression years, the Iron Guard became a national mass movement. Its proselytizing and organizing in often politically untouched peasant communities feeding off the deepening rural impoverishment caused by the economic crisis. Its practical small-scale self-help community work projects helped the Guard to establish a permanent presence in village society. In the early 1930s, Codiano was elected to Parliament. But due to clashes between the legionaries and state officials, the movement was suppressed. In retaliation, the Romanian Prime Minister was assassinated in 1933. Towards the end of the 1930s, the movement had around 200,000 members, but was not capable of launching an effective uprising. An important propaganda event was the funeral of two legionaries who had fallen in 1937 in the Spanish Civil War. This incident increased the popularity of the Iron Guard in Romania. Towards the end of that year, the movement gained 15.5% of the vote in the parliamentary elections. In February 1938, King Carol II dissolved Parliament and established his royal dictatorship. Codriano was arrested in April and executed in November that year. Now, that, uh, that salute, it, 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 it conscious of such fear in people, you know what I mean? Now, I wonder if this salute for the other side conscious of the same sort of uh, imagery. For the people on that side. 
I guess it's because I don't harbor no hate for nobody that I, 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 I can't really uh, fathom anything like that to a certain degree. Yeah, certain things, uh, it just sparks fear in me. Uh, propaganda, don't, because then I, I, I want to go behind the scenes. And maybe that's a dangerous way to look at it. Okay, let me look at the ordinary people that's, that's uh, caught up in this. Because people tend to say, you know, they, they tend to cast a, a, a blanket uh, understanding of a situation on a, on a group of people. Like, oh, well, that person is Grenadian, so they must all think that way. You know what I mean? Uh, and if they don't think the way I think, then they must be against us. Now, coming from Grenada, no, no, I haven't, because I've been called communist before, but that was just simply because I'm from, I'm from, you know, there, and that happened at the time. It doesn't happen now, but because people realize, you know, I am of no political persuasion, really. You know what I mean? I'm of the human persuasion. But uh, when you're in that situation, a lot of the time staying quiet is a way of surviving. Especially if you have a family to feed and a family to take care of, you're going to put your head down and you're going to try to take care of your family despite, of, despite the circumstances around you. So change is going to be hard to come when, when people are trying to maintain the survival of their family. And I think that's what a lot of uh, poly tricksters and dictators and, and people who stand up and shout propaganda, that's the sort of thing, and, 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 and say things are propaganda and do things that are considered propaganda they sort of bank on people reacting that way put your head down try to survive deal with it which most humans would because most humans aren't the violent type most humans unless they get riled up to it uh, in a spur of a moment a lot of revolutions is like that people get so angry and it's a build-up don't get me wrong but then you know you're still thinking, I've got to, got to think of my family and they have to survive. But then you go to a rally and everybody's angry and then looting starts and then they start burning stuff and boom, you're in the middle of it. And then all that frustration for years spills over and you end up doing stuff. A lot of people don't understand how it is to be, especially in countries that haven't had that kind of issue going on. They don't understand how it is to live under those conditions and you know they just hear what the, they say and they just blanket people thinking well if they're not doing anything they all like that let's get back to this the 30th of november the office of the military attorney attached to the second army corps reported that the night before Codriano had been shot while trying to escape in reality they were loaded into a truck tied with ropes and when the truck stopped on the deserted road they were strangled to death and then shot brought back to the military prison in Ilava, near Bucharest, and buried in a common grave there. Jorge Asima became the new leader. Interesting enough, King Carol II added fascist elements to his own dictatorship. While all political organizations were banned, the Front of National Rebirth, the FNR, was the only one allowed with the goal to unite all Romanian political parties under one banner. This had limited success. In 1939, the Iron Guard assassinated another prime minister and its leader Sima fled to Germany while over 215 imprisoned legionaries were executed. When Whoa. Romania started to lose territories to its neighbors, as I discussed previously, its position became much weaker. Before King Carol II abdicated on the 6th of November, 1940, he asked General Ion Antonescu to form a new government. Antonescu allied with the Iron Guard and formed a national revolutionary state with two leaders, Antonescu and Sima. Conflicts with them soon emerged and this would lead to the demise of the Iron Guard. Although the Marshal and the Iron Guard presented themselves in public as a harmonious team, conflicts between them emerged. Antonescu and Sima belong to different generations and they have dissimilar political interests and expectations. The Nazis they tried to mediate, but because of the reckless nature of the Iron Guard, this became difficult. 
Now Dineshku was angry with Sima because Sima was not able to control the Iron Guard death squads that roamed the countryside, killing Jews and destabilizing the country. For Hitler, the most important thing was that Romania had to become a stable country in order to form a stable and strong ally against the USSR. In January, Hitler invited Antonescu to discuss things. And Hitler made clear that stability was more important than ideology. When Antonescu returned to Romania, he denounced the Iron Guard. This was backed by Germany, although Germany provided asylum to legionaries who fled Romania. The Iron Guard did not go down without a fight. Towards the end of January, they launched an uprising and a pogrom in Bucharest. Eventually, this uprising was crushed by the troops loyal to Antonescu. Some less radical elements were integrated into the new regime, but over 10,000 legionaries were arrested and about 250 killed. About 300 Romanian fascists, including Sima, fled to Germany. Some 20,000 went into hiding in Romania. The Iron Guard members who fled to Germany would have a troublesome relation to the Nazis. When Antonescu was overthrown and Romania switched sides, Sima was released and soon proclaimed a new Romanian state, urging all Romanians to fight against the Soviets. But by that time, Romania had already switched sides and the Romanians fought with the Soviets against the Axis. The remaining Iron Guard members continued to support Nazi Germany till the end of April 1945. If you'd like to learn about another reckless movement in Hungary, you can check out the video that I made on the Aerocross party. And if you'd like to learn how Romania actually joined the side of the Axis, I have a video for you on just that right here. Man. That was a lot of, there was just, there was just so many, uh, so many different aspects to all of this, you know? It's like nobody seemed to know which side anybody is on. It was sort of ambiguous how they all, <laughs> how they all sort of survived in that area there. How do you know which side is which? Politics is a is, is a crazy thing, boy. Politics is a crazy thing. You know what I mean? Because like, while Germany is uh doing their politics to the prime minister, they still give the Iron Guard refuge where they are. But where they are, the Iron Guard didn't get along with the Nazis, even though they had similar ide uh, ideologies of who to dislike and who. That's just crazy. That's just total confusion. That's. That's total stability. Sta uh, no stability whatsoever there. Wow, this was quite interesting. I've never heard of them before. Whoever uh, suggested this, thank you for suggesting this for me. And uh, I hope you guys uh, either learn something or enjoy learning the history of this with me. You know what I mean? I'll leave a link in the description to this video so you can go check it out. Obviously, check out this channel because, as he says, he's got more on there that you could uh, uh, look at. Comment in the comment section. Hit me up. Please, no name calling. No screaming, no nothing like that. We just discuss and we're trying to figure it out because if we figure out some things about the human race, not the politics so much, but the human race and the human condition during certain things, then we're going to realize that our conditions aren't as different. Some more severe than others depending on what they went through. But generally speaking, the human reaction is relatively the same depending on the political system that is... Uh, controlling them at the time. Y'all take care of each other, all right? Cool runnings.